emotional management including anger management as you know emotions are really important and controlling or managing the emotions are really important to achieve the success in life isn't it so it's an important part of the soft skill how to manage our emotions uh, you know there is a fine balance between managing and controlling so managing is a lot more important than controlling sometimes it backfires you know uh, if you try to control uh, your emotions which is not really an interesting aspect you know the emotions have its own uh, functionality you so you should know how to make good use of your emotions you know to to leverage the potentials of the emotions for your own good for the productivity you know so that is why it's very very important how to manage rather than control the emotions so in the soft skill of course the emotions are really important so as reason right so reason we have already covered in the critical thinking right and reason or being rational is uh, you know it is being controlled by higher cognitive uh, order functionality for example uh, for example the the brain right so neuronal cortex is what is being controlled that uh, the the cognitive biases and logical fallacies which we have already discussed but emotions are really deep inside in our evolutionary legacy it is being controlled by panoply of hormones and neurotransmitters and uh, uh, evolutionarily conserved regions like amygdala that is responsible for emotions so emotional outburst is kind of similar to the drug overdose you know substance abuse so it's never a good option to take any decisions or even doing actions when you are under emotional outburst so it's just like a drunk card texting you know randomly or sharing some nonsense in the social media right uh, when they are high you know that's not a good option at all right so yes yeah, so in classical sense or in nietzschean sense the friedrich nietzsche is uh, the german philosopher right according to him uh, you know the reason is being of course it's the god of reason is apollo while god of emotion is uh, dionysius huh? so dionysian and apollonian so these two aspects are both important part of the soft skill apollonian is basically something to do with critical thinking and higher order mental uh, functions right like logical Uh, fallacies identifying when you make it of course mental models and cognitive biases all those things you know psychological biases everything while dionysian is all about emotions how to control the emotions so reason and emotion uh, are not anti we need both for success in our life right so uh, an in depth coverage is there in my book please read it just this is just a summary of uh, Uh, the section on this management uh, you know emotional management so uh, yes yeah, so coming to the the uh, uh, decision making of course the emotions play a crucial role in the decision making and it's never a good idea to take any important decisions when you are under stress or under any kind of emotional outburst you know so for example when you get a, an angry email in your workplace you know your colleagues sent an, e- an email to everybody then knee jerk reaction would be uh, you know react to such an insulting an email by reply or and send an angry mail you will not even realize what would be the repercussions of such an email so never do that so reacting is always bad responding is better let it brew in your mind at least for 24 hours so when you go home think about how you know and you can even plan how to respond to that email or most of most of the time even responding is not required you know people understand that such an you know it is an arrogant email that your colleague might have sent it so even responding is unnecessary and even though you need to respond you can think in a calm state of mind you know so during the emotional outburst never take any decisions especially substantial de- decisions including when you are happy you know when you are extremely happy taking uh, decisions are not good not just the negative thing right and yeah so to identify yourself with your emotion is also an important skill there's something called emotional granularity 
right? So labeling, when you are sad, when you are anger, people don't realize that when you get anger, you know. So you might be boiling with anger and take decisions that will backfire you. So it's extremely important to take a step back and think, oh, this is, I'm anger, I'm, I'm in angry mood, right? So, yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy now. So label your emotion, that is really important. Something called metacognition, right? So metacognition means that, you know, you're, you're actually thinking about thoughts, that is metacognition. So emotional granularity means you're labeling your own emotions. I feel anger or I feel sad, you know. So that kind of uh, statements are much more better for your well-being rather than saying that I'm angry. So identifying yourself with your mood is never a good, good option, right? So I am angry or I am sad means that you yourself is entirely your sad or angry. No, it's better to say I feel angry, you know, I mean, I feel anger, uh, those kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, rewording, right? Or yes, so that is important aspect of the uh, management of the, or affirmations about managing the emotions, right? So feelings and mood are all emotions. It's just different synonyms for, uh, you can say that feelings of mood or emotion, whatever you want to say it, okay? So, and of course, CBT is an important aspect of this, uh, emotional management, the cognitive behavioral therapy, which is nothing but an extension of the stoicism. So it's simple, uh, simply the stoic ideas have been used into the practice, you know, uh, therapeutic practice, right? That is called the CBT. So stoicism, by the way, is an ancient Greco-Roman philosophy. And uh, it's the entire stoicism, you can say it as managing your emotion for your well-being, you know. So how do you actually manage your emotions? So you can change your perspective. Just like I told you, instead of identifying yourself with anger, like I'm angry, you say that I feel anger, right? So you can change it by rewording your perspective. So the, the key message of stoicism is that there are few things which are under your control, while few things which are not under your control, right? For example, uh, for example, what reputation in your workplace, it's not under your control. So if something happened to the reputation in your workplace, it makes no sense to feel bad about it because it's not in our control, right? At the same time, your choices, you know, it's absolutely in your control. So for example, if you want to be an addict of smoking or drinking, then once you become addict, it's always okay to to rethink about your decisions, you know. But things which are beyond your control, another example is weather tomorrow, definitely is not under your control. No one's control, right? So thinking bad about such things which are beyond your control, you should completely avoid it. That is what the stoicism, one of the key messages of stoicism is all about, right? And yes, so your health also partially under your control, but there are certain things which are completely beyond your control. For example, uh, you know, uh, for example, you're diagnosed with cancer, even though you practice, you know, healthy measures, healthy lifestyle, right? So such situations, it actually makes no sense to be sad about it. You know, that is the stoicism is all about. Stoicism deals with domestication of our emotions and feelings. It's not about complete elimination of it, you know. So that is the idea behind cognitive behavioral therapy as well. So it is not like completely avoiding the anger altogether. It's not an answer. We need it. You know, all these things have got deep evolutionary purposes, right? So, uh, yeah, so it's not like completely avoiding, but making good use of this. So what are some of the tips of regulating and managing your emotions. So the number one tip is that we are all human beings. So understand and accept the fact that, right, uh, we are driven, our decisions are driven mostly by our emotions. You might say that I'm a rational person. I deeply think, but uh, just accept the fact that emotions control most of our decisions in our life, right? So it's not the reason. So emotions, the Dionysian part, is always overpowering. So 
extreme emotions, of course, it is not always, right? Only sometime it happens and understand that it's transient. It's not going to last forever. Like the, the burst ang anger outbursts uh, might happen, but it's not a permanent, you know, it's only a transient phenomenon. So what we have to do is that if, if we have this kind of uh, anger outburst, we tend to identify that we are anger. That is the first thing, you know, the, the, the emotional granularity is important. That needs some training. And then, uh, you know, and once you know that, once you realize that um feeling anger, you know, at that time you can make sure that you don't take any significant decisions. And also you don't react to the insults or any kind of abuse, you know. So that is what. The reason is that most of the time these kind of uh, extreme outbursts, I told you, you are under the control of hormones and uh, neurotransmitters, you know. So you will actually, you know, you will, uh, you will feel tremor actually. <laughs> you know, the entire body will be shivering with anger, extreme pleasure also, right, ecstasy. So all these times, you know, the conscious control you're kind of losing. And that is the reason why I never take, uh, you know, decisions during this time. And of course, the, the main reason for this outburst is ruminating of our thoughts, right? Thinking about the past or, or fearing about the future. So one of the important tip is the mindful meditation. So you can meditate on, uh, you know, uh, on your surrounding. Of course, the, the, the term meditation, many people equate that with religion. Uh, it is not really. It's a very old practice. The mindfulness is, you don't really need to go to Himalaya, for example, to do this mindful meditation. You can do anywhere, a coffee shop or in a bus, you know, or anywhere, the crowded place. So mindful meditation is just that super aware of your surrounding and stay here and now. Here means right at this spot and now means right at this time. So don't vex about your past or, uh, you know, worried about your future. Just live in the present fleeting moment. Carpe dying is a philosophy in the Stoicism. That is exactly mindful meditation. One important, uh, you know, the tip which I learned from some other sources is think of, uh, think of someone is about to attack you. So if you're just thinking, uh, sitting somewhere and think somebody is about to attack you. So you will be really aware of your surroundings, right? So that, uh, you know, hyper awareness is the key of mindfulness, being focused and living in at this point of time. And yeah, usually if you play with a, a kid, or when you play with a pet, or if you're in a team sports like tennis or badminton, you do feel that hyper awareness, that state. So you should actually practice that, the mindful meditation. So that's really a helpful tip, you know, that I came across. And comparison is never a good idea for the emotions, right? Comparing especially with uh, the successful people is a sure way for you to become sad. And also social media, you know, social media usage, the multiple studies that have shown that people usually lie in social media and they, they are already filtered. They show only the good part of their life. And if you compare your life, you know, your uh, benign life, nothing interesting with your friends and uh, you're lo looking at your friends or traveling everywhere, you know, and that comparison, you will subconsciously will start comparing. You might not accept, but you will do it. And that will set you to depression or at least some sadness, right? So that is where the comparison is never a good idea. But you can, of course, you can compare yourself with your past. That is fine. And to a certain level, you can even compare with yourself with uh, people who are really sad or downtrodden and think that how blessed you are, how thankful you feel to others, you know? So that kind of comparison is still acceptable. But Comparing yourself with others, you know, successful others, is never going to help you. And also beware of this negativity bias, which we already covered in critical thinking. So human beings are a lot more prone for negative news rather than the positive news. So studies have shown that to counterbalance the effect of this neg one negative news, you need five positive news, you know. So 
try to minimize your exposure to such negative news so my suggestion is that go for media fasting at least once in a week which is practiced in scandinavian country especially in finland you know the, the finnish sisu is all about that going for media fasting and wilderness and also during mornings you know so once you wake up till you start your day like around 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock never check the social media you know you can see that significant improvement to your mood your emotions you know you'll be much emotionally well off if you practice that you know and uh, yeah so there is uh, i told you and now you should minimize the interaction with people whom you label as toxic you know yes yeah, so we are all social animals right and society around us play a significant role in our own emotional well-being so if you surround yourself with happy people you're also naturally happy so yes minimize that such toxic people in your life you know don't uh, interact too much with them right so that's very important and also you should refrain for continuous validation so many people live the entire life looking for validation appeasing their seniors you know so that kind of life actually makes no sense looking posting the stuff in the social media only for likes so they count how many people liked it that is all validation you know so there has been some studies that have interviewed people in hospices in their sunset years just before that and most of them answered that their main regret in their life is that they wish they wouldn't have lived their life for someone else they wish they would have lived their life for themselves you know so that validation is never going to help you so forego such uh, ego and validation and uh, you know and embrace learning right and uh, living a humble life that is a lot more important and also managing your hopes and expectation is uh, uh, very very important for better emotional health so if you're expecting to be a perfectionist so for sure way you will never achieve it you know so perfect for example if you're learning violin i want to be uh, a great violinist you're comparing with the greatest violinist of ever time no that is not going to help you at all so you need to do that step by step you know and also from partner or if going for a movie for example uh, movie in the sense you are reading a lot of good reviews about a movie and then you are going to a movie theater so movie should in, in such cases movie should try their very best to impress you yeah, and it's highly likely that the movie will fail to impress you you will not be happy with that movie because you went there with a lot of prior expectations you know posterior bayesian posterior probability is very high in that sense right just like getting married to if you expect a lot from your future partner chances are high that you will not have a successful married life right and uh, yes so get support from friends and family in times of emotional catastrophe so that's very very important don't be a silent sufferer there are clinically proven methods uh, behavioral therapy like cbt and also you know pharmacological interventions there are you know successful depression treatments available these days so don't be a silent sufferer uh, get support from your social group you know so that is also very very important and uh, you can also try to rewrite the reality by changing the perspective one example i already told you about how to label that uh, i am anger or i feel angry these two things are quite different right and another example is that if someone try to insult you you can consider that it's not that person is insulting you but the problem lies with the person's misunderstanding about the situation right so his or her misunderstanding about you that is the root cause of the trouble so if you can rewrite or change your perspective as in stoic philosophy uh, that that can answer you know that can we can make good use of that for our emotional management and uh, sometimes you cannot change the reality like you know the death of a family or a friend 
So in such cases, you need to accept that reality. So acceptance is really important in stoicism too, you know, acceptance. Uh, yeah, so acceptance means amar fatty, means, uh, you know, the, the fatty means uh, the future, amar means love, love your future, what will be the future. So expect the worst things happen all the time, you know, so it doesn't matter. So if you're expecting the worst thing, then chances are high that you'll be happy at the end of the day, you know. So that is what Amar Fati and Stoics go a step further and they advocate for something called Premeditatio Malorum. What is it? Premeditatio Malorum means uh, uh, premeditating on malor. Malor means, uh, you know, uh, bad things that can happen to your life. So if you're, if you wake up in the day and then start thinking that your kids or your parents will die <laughs> it's extremely negative but yes that is something like an immunization a cognitive immunization against sadness you know extreme sadness so if you are already expecting such bad things that can happen to you for example if you're already well placed in a good job I'm a professor in a central university and now I've, I can think that, okay, what if I lose my job? So I keep on expecting that I, I, I lost my professorship. You know, will I have to beg? No, I will have to do the alternative arrangement, right? So that is very important, you know, premeditatio malorum. That is also, the, it's an immunization against the future emotional roller coaster rides, you know. And when the emotion starts really over, overpowering you, then you should feel it and then uh, you should notice your actions, you know, like you're tremoring, your body is actually thing, and then uh, you're shouting, you're, you know, your voice is extremely high in voice, right? You're, uh, I mean, the, 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 you're, uh, you're becoming loud, right? So all those things you can notice and you can label it. That's, I think it's very, very important, uh, like a scientist who is going to describe the process, right? But don't be judgmental and don't think that you are bad because you felt anger, nothing like that. It's very natural. But noticing it is, you know, you need some training on it, right? So, yeah, uh, in, the, in the beginning days, I mean, you can ask a trusted person uh, to, to remind you that you are getting anger so that you will, you will know it, you are getting anger. So you should treat these emotions like, a, uh, like a, uh, you know, like traveling through the tight pool. You know, you go along with the tide and don't try to push it on the opposite side. Is, are you getting the point? It's not like controlling, but managing the emotions are really important. You need to ride along with the tide. So as the emotions, so you can, uh, when you feel this kind of uh, emotional outburst like sadness or uh, extreme anger, take some deep breath. So, so many breathing exercises available. Uh, Yes, so yoga, for example, you can try it, right? Many kinds of meditation are available, you can search out. And take some deep breath. Oh, it's very simple. Just take the breath, deep breath, and uh, so that your even your belly, uh, you know, increases. It's not just a chest, but the entire thing, right? And, and then release it slowly, right? Taking breath inside, you know, when you inhale, it can be faster, but when you exhale, it should be very slow. So that way, and just feel it, feel that the air is passing through and, you know, and uh, be hyper aware of your surrounding. That is really important, you know, and, uh, and notice that, uh, you know, of course, uh, uh, I mean, for a lot of other tips, but I, I am just telling the, the most important thing that exercise can help the multiple studies that shows that exercise can help to alleviate some forms of depression so if you are really depressed you can go for exercise so in, in my case you know whenever i feel really depressed or uh, anger you know i i know that there are a lot of stress hormone going all around in my body and then i can make good use of it i can leverage the potential of this hormone going for a run so for running such hormones do help me so you know, it's it's making good use of such emotional state. If you like boxing, then you can do it. You know, you can hit a gym and start boxing onto 
the the sack you know sandbag why not right so the the breathing i told you and also the meditation uh, as in you know meditation many people feel that meditation is like completely abs complete absence of any thoughts not like that you know so of course one form of meditation is hyper awareness and mindfulness and other forms of meditation also if, even if you are getting some thoughts you can think the thoughts as cloud and you can gently push the cloud away and go back to the state you know it is not that whenever a thought comes that is the end of your meditation and declare yourself as a loser never do that so it's it's natural the thoughts will come to you and if you if you try yourself not to think of anything then surely some things will come to you just think of just uh, spend next one minute not thinking of a cat your time starts now do not think of cat close your eyes don't think of a cat <laughs> the cat comes to you right so that is how it works so it's not complete void of any thought right so thoughts will definitely come to you you are all human beings and when it comes gently push as in you're pushing a beautiful fluffy white cloud i love planes i love traveling and this you know the journey just after take off or before landing i really love it this fluffy fluffy cloud gently pushing it away okay exercise i told you and air pollution friends has a lot of things to do with your emotion air, when whenever this aqi uh, there is air quality index is high then chance are high that you get depressed and you get emotional outburst there are multiple studies for example the one which i quoted is uh, zijelma et al in 2016 so mood alterations and depressions are highly correlated with air pollution so if you are ex- living in a place where air pollution is prominent then beware of it right you might already be in emotional roller coaster so don't take any significant decisions when you are exposed to the air pollution you know so of course you will see that in the course of this uh, uh, program uh, on soft skills even learning and memory are related with the air pollution so high aqi will have impact on your iq level as well as your memory you know so beware of all of all these things so i do have iq air uh, app in my phone especially i like it because uh, i like to cycle so while deciding should i go for cycle or not i always check this thing the iq air because cycling when aqi is very poor that is very high aqi will have a huge impact on your life you know so exercising outdoor is never a good idea when the aqi is uh, beyond what is recommended even up to my my tolerance level is up to 200 so if it goes beyond 200 i completely avoid any outdoor activities especially outdoor exercise so air pollution do have impact and finally global warming and climate change multiple studies that shows that global warming especially high temperatures are uh, in correlated with mood alteration especially extreme mood alterations aggression and violence for example miles novello and anders in 2019 and anguillai in 2020 right so uh, increased ambient temperature causes similar effects even on zebra fish if you increase the ambient temperature uh, when you grow the zebra fish you see the same stuff so it might be something to with our evolutionary legacy it's uh, it might be really primitive in our evolutionary times you know so avoid extreme temperature extreme hot or extreme cold and especially excessive ambient temperature the high temperature is more important uh, you know uh, i mean more dangerous than lower temperature when it comes to the emotional outbursts right so it might be one of the effective strategies just avoiding this extremely high temperature might just be one strategy, along with of course the air pollution you know 
So if you are living in an area with the extreme air pollution, like how I do here in Punjab, you know, uh, right now it is okay. But when it comes to the winter, uh, air pollution levels skyrocket. So I do have a, you know, uh, an uh, air filter in my home. So that helps to a certain level. But restricting myself inside home itself uh, is a good option during those times, especially when it's extremely polluted outside, you know. So to summarize, acceptance is the key. Accept it that we are human being, you know, and controlling the emotion itself is not a good idea. Managing the emotion is more important. And understanding when you are under extreme emotional outburst itself will help you out, right? And the final message would be, once you know that you are in extreme anger, stop taking any significant decisions. And also, you know, uh, and also uh, stop uh, ruminating on your past and comparing yourself with others. That is never a good idea. Thank you.